Lasers. Lasers are so... 90s? I was gonna say 70s. Can you please stop making me feel old? Got bad news for you, Sam. You are old. What the hell is going on? Hello there. Sarah from 17 once again. This is my Splinter Cell Chaos Theory Expert 100% Walkthrough. This is the final mission of the game. It is mission 10. It is the Kokubo Sosho. Which... I might have said wrong, <laughs> I might, might not be like, Kokubo Shosho Shosho, I don't even bloody know. Suffice to say, after the hell that was the bathhouse, I did this mission in one attempt, which was really good to know, because I thought the bathhouse was the last mission of the game, because my memory did not serve me too well. Turns out that this is the last mission, and it's not too bad. So, it's still another pretty long one, but I can tell you, I only, I say I did it in one attempt, which is technically true, I saved myself into a corner. I saved myself doing the split jump next to a camera that never turns. And I thought it was rotating, so I did the split jump, wait for it to rotate, drop down, and then I'd be okay. It never rotates, so every time I dropped down, an alarm sounded, and I literally couldn't do anything. And the irony is, if I'd have done the split jump about five yards in front, I would have climbed up into a vent. And it was the most heartbreaking thing ever, so it was technically two runs. But I'm going to say one attempt because I never really failed as much as I failed the other ones where I missed an objective or uh, I got spotted or I saw a body. It was literally just like not a results page, just that I can't physically progress. So let's do this again. But um, so, so much more manageable and great for that. And this early area here, disable the camera, pick the lock. And we're going to be pushing into the uh, into the main facility. You need to do this quickly though, because there's. Do you see how close that dude was just then? That is about as close as it gets. Um, this very first area is probably the sloppiest part of this run, because this was all me. Like I can't remember this level. I'm just going to wing it. I didn't even know I was going the right way, but um, the rest I completely remembered, which was bizarre. And it gives me the opportunity to speak about some different things, because. I got baffled last night because I saw something I'd not seen before on the internet, which is not a, a difficult thing to do because I think if you search the internet for long enough, you're bound to see something you've never seen before. But suffice to say, I was on a certain gentleman's site and uh, I'd got there by a, a link at the side of a page on a website I was on, which I, you know when you're, you're searching for something and it ends up taking you to the corner of the internet that you did, didn't realise it was going to take you to and then you see one of those ads on the site and you click it. Well, uh, the ad on the site was uh, a very beautiful looking Japanese girl wearing contact lenses and um, if you don't know, I have a big thing for eyes. And I don't know why, I just do. There's something about uh, a girl with nice eyes that just, you know, it does it for me. And there's something about contact lenses as well that, you know, I don't know what it is. It's the weirdest thing and I'll give you some examples. In X-Men 2... The main bad guy in that film is, I forget the name of her, she's that female Wolverine thing. And for the entire film, she has these contact lenses in that give her like this platinum eye. And I don't know what, but I fell in love with that woman during the course of that film. Just because of her damn eyes. And she, she's a beautiful woman anyway. But then at the end when she dies, she loses it and it goes back to her normal like almond eyes, her dark brown eyes. And she did nothing for me. Like, nothing. Done. We're done here, love. Marriage done, divorce, everything's over. It's just this weird thing. And I don't know what it is, but I clicked it, as as you do. And it took me to this, this like, I don't know what it was, this cosplay porn site of some some description. So I'm clicking through at this, 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 this lovely looking lady wearing... I don't know what it was. It was some kind of, like, blue and white, shall we say, maid outfit. I don't really know. And I don't know what anime it was from, or manga, or whatever. But it really confused me, because if you've been on the internet, you already know where this ends. This ends in uh, all the good bits being covered in Minecraft. Well, this wasn't. And, and I know you're like, Chris, there are uncensored pornography on the internet. This this does exist. I can't believe you're surprised at this. No, it wasn't that, guys. It wasn't that. Trust me. I'm, 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 I'm used to that, shall we say. There was this tape that looked like like masking tape or bandage tape or I don't know what it was, like something you'd put on a swollen wrist across the good bits and it was just what? <laughs> like, like this gallery had like nine pages of this girl in various states of dress and like I'm just looking at this picture thinking I don't understand what this is for for two reasons, by the way the path here super effective, pretty simple stuff it looks intimidating, but it's not too bad. So, the tape stretches from 
uh, shall we say, the, the, the point of the pubis that, that becomes the genitalia, all the way under to... Is it the penanium, I think it's called? The space between your bits and your bum. Or the holes, anyway, should I say. I'm trying to be less graphic. And there's just this tape! This crazy, like, masking tape! And at first, when I looked at it, because tape is rather pliable, so it, it adheres to the surface that it's on, and it also adheres to the contours of the surface that it's on. So the tape effectively mirrors what's underneath, like 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 a an impromptu mold. So you can see that there is some kind of slit here, there is some kind of you know camel toe, but you're like, what is it doing? So at first I like, have somebody photoshopped this? Was it previously all blurry and shit, or, or you know, mosaiced out? And somebody's gone in and replaced it with like clone stamped skin? I'm like, why does this look so weird? And then I, and I skip to this next picture, and it's it's straight up tape across the good bits. And I, I've never seen that before ever, and I was stunned. Like I'm sat there scanning through this 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 gallery of of beauty for all the wrong reasons, because <laughs> I'm just like. What is happening? And it reminded me of the uh, the Bill Hicks gag when he's on about you know porn mags in England, where where all the the good stuff is happening. There's these blue dots over them, and it was the reverse of that. Just this this, this really confused moment of what what is this doing at all? And then it always makes me think of like who's the guy who put the tape there? Is that a job? That's a pretty good job if you ask me. Well, unless you have to do it on the cocks as well, which you know you might have to. Jobs are not always pleasant, but that was one of the weirder things that I'd seen at that moment, and I'd never seen it before, so I thought I'd share it. So there's a bunch of people looking at me now in a new light, and a bunch of people just like laughing, knowing exactly what I mean. <laughs> I had never seen that before. The internet is a special place. But you'll notice the music right now is kind of kicked up, but I still haven't technically been te words. I haven't technically been spotted. And as we move through this, we're trying to get to some hostages. And this is one of those moments where there's a couple of guys set up in really cock-blocky positions, but they don't have the biggest effect on you, which is kind of cool. So here's the first one, and then there's a guy just behind him. So, there you go. You can you can hear a tension in the game. We're going to knock a light out, and then we're going to walk past this guy. Uh, pretty simple stuff, actually. And then the next room, you have to be really careful when you speak to the, the hostage, because Sam stands up perfectly into a well-lit position and people can see you, so you need to be aware of it, you need to save accordingly, and you need to be careful. So, I waited a little bit too long here because I didn't think this was going to work, but it did, and I'm always grateful when a strategy comes together like that. But We've talked a lot of Splinter Cell in this guide, so let's talk some, some different things for the people that are not so interested in it, who probably aren't even watching. So the guy's just reset his position, and the music just reset. So I waited for it, and now I'm going to move into the room. But I watched Sense8 the other day, which is a new sci-fi show that the entire first season's available on Netflix, I think. And it's 12 episodes of a show which is directed by the Wachowski brothers, who were those people that made that one good movie. And there's a lot of buzz around it because it's new and because it's quite controversial. And... I was looking for a show to watch. This is me inching forward to try and talk to this dude without going in the light, if you're wondering what I'm doing. And I was interested in the notion of it. I, th I think like a collective consciousness, like a hive mind, is a really interesting idea. So I, I picked it up, I started watching it, and I thought the first episode was such a shit. I did, I thought it was just bad. It had some interesting looking characters, it had some interesting locations, but for the most, it just seemed to be this... Like, needlessly pandering to, to every kind of sexuality imaginable so as not to offend anybody, while at the same time being kind of progressive and out there and, you know, risky. And then the story just wasn't there, because it was a lot of really emotional moments with characters that you had absolutely no context of or, or emotion towards, because you didn't know them. There was, you know, the girl from Splash playing, you know... Not a mermaid this time. There was that that Asian guy who was a really good actor who was being really serious, and then the dude who was kind of like Anderson from Helsing who was like, "I am really mean, and you're going to hate me in the show." And you just had no concept of what was happening. And then there was a lot of sex, and don't get me wrong, guys, sex is great, it is, but it needs a purpose. And I think storytelling, as far as sexuality is concerned, is something that is either done well or something that is done poorly. And I think a lot of modern dramas at this moment in time are doing it badly. 
and I think Game of Thrones is guilty of this and I think that Sense8 is just as guilty as this where a lot of the times they put it in there to kind of indulge the fact that there's been a lot of exposition or it's been quite dark so they're just like oh here's some tits flopping around and whoa next scene and I disagree with it I do because I, I want it to mean something and a lot of the times it just doesn't it's just an opportunity to, to be like ooh it's so risky and this takes it an even step further, which when I was looking online on IMDb, there's a lot of really mad people and a lot of really angry people and a lot of people doing this. Is it social justice warrior thing? Which is a term I'd never heard of until like a week ago and now I'm seeing it everywhere. Where basically, apparently there's a lot of homophobia and transphobia. I, I didn't even know transphobia was a word! Directed towards this show because it has like every sexuality on display and in this first episode you, you saw a lot like you saw a lot of lesbian sex with strap-ons which is pretty pretty risky you know I'm no prude but you just don't really see that on TV shows the ones I watch anyway and then there was another one where it was two gay men and there was quite a lot of emphasis on it and we live in a world where people are still incredibly uncomfortable at the thought of that kind of content because it's not as ubiquitous as, as heterosexual sex and when I was reading these boards there was a lot of people saying like oh I'm a gay man and I don't get mad when they when society forces man and woman sex in my face it's like I, I understand that dude but like you said society forces it in your face it's everywhere and it's accepted and it's universally accepted except for like in Dubai because they're crazy no it's 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 the norm and to be gay isn't and unfortunately we live in a society where people are still fucking fire and brimstone against that stuff as wrong as it is that's just how it is right now and that's the way it is and it doesn't make it right because it isn't I think it's ugly and awful but unfortunately that's the way it is at the moment and as much as it is changing and it is getting better right now that's the type of stuff that a lot of people are incredibly against and to me it's it's madness like as long as you're not killing anybody and as long as nobody's being hurt I don't even care like, as long as it's not happening in my face I don't mind but even when I was watching this program it, it was quite shocking for me because you just don't see it and I was trying to take it from that perspective of I have nothing against two man kissing I don't you know I even really like those characters in that show because I did watch it all and I think they're really strong characters I just think when it's forced into in your face so suddenly when you're just not used to it I think there's always that gut that knee-jerk reaction of whoa what is this and there's still a lot of people that are, are really repressed and conservative towards that entire topic and this show just kind of thrusts it in your face and as much as I think it's a good thing I think it's gonna put a lot of people off and uh, the thing that put me off was that it had no point later on there is a, a sex scene that involves like five people at the same time and I think it's really really interesting because it's on a plot level it's these people sharing this this experience because of this link they all have between each other and it's it's essentially an orgy but it's cool because it has a point <laughs> all the other stuff is just is just not there and the the the, the strap on lesbian sex thing is actually with uh, uh, somebody who's changed genders which is a whole host of other things but it's i think that's what people are going to see rather than the story especially in the first few episodes because I was playing, what was I playing? Resident Evil Revelations 2, which is so fucking boring. I need anything to take my mind off what I'm doing in that game. But I was playing that, and I was watching it, and I wasn't, I was listening and I was glancing across, and it just wasn't doing anything for me. And then a couple episodes later, it gets to this point where this, this shared sense that they all have starts to actually become quite interesting. And I'll tell you the moment where it kind of clicked for me, and I was genuinely interested to see what was gonna happen was when the uh, the transgender person is in hospital and they're telling her that there's something wrong with her brain and her mum's there calling her Michael because that's how she was born and she'll always be Michael because they're all super conservative and she's like fuck you mum which is really, really must be very sad and they're gonna kill her 
because they're telling her she has something wrong with her brain so she needs surgery immediately but the people that are with her that this 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 asian guy who's kind of like you know morpheus for the time being is telling her that she's in trouble and he's telling the others that she's in trouble as well and they don't know what's happening but they can sense it because it's happening to her and there's this great moment where they're going to operate on her and she's she's handcuffed in on this gurney and it's all you know quite intense and it's it's hyped up this is where i got stuck by the way <laughs> so this camera right here is always looking the other way and I didn't know I could hear it moving so I assumed it was rotating it never moves from looking the other direction so I ended up climbing up here and getting stuck because I could never get down but if you look just above me now there's a way up and I was just short of it which is hilarious so I don't need to go and do what I'm doing now this guy doesn't have to be knocked out you can climb up from that vantage point and never knock a guy out dead simple dead easy I just didn't know at the time folks but as I was saying sorry She's on this bed, and they know, on this gurney, sorry, and they know that she needs help, and they, they do this ability, I think it's called visiting, where they can share her experiences by being there, but they can also kind of become her, and she can use their skills um, to defend herself and, and act. So one of these uh, sense people is, is a cop, who as a kid was quite unruly because his dad was a cop, and he learnt by spending far too much time at the station playing with handcuffs, how to pick handcuffs. So he takes over her, picks these handcuffs, and helps her get out of this situation. And that's the moment when you realise exactly the potential of what this show can have, where they, at any moment, can help each other in these situations, and it gives it that really cool, like, taut, suspenseful, and interesting, you know, setups and it reminded me of the Bourne ultimatum when Jason Bourne is going through um, the is it London Underground or the London Rail Station which is the underground technically you know the, the the place in London and it's super busy and he's telling the guy on the phone what he needs to do and he's like interchanging with him and taking people out and stopping them from taking him down and he's like informing him it reminded me of that and I think that kind of setup where someone else is in power and he's helping someone can be really really good and great to watch and this show is, is, is full of moments like that uh, it's also full of moments that aren't quite as, as solid and there's, there are areas where the plot's a little bit thin and as I've mentioned there's a lot of embracing sexuality Pansexuality, I think the, the term is for, for loving everything, including transgender people and what have you. There's a lot of that. And if you're the type of person that's put off by that, I think this could be quite a difficult show at times because it, it definitely wears its sexuality on its shoulder. And unfortunately, not all of it is warranted, which I wish it was. But some of it is. And uh, at the end of the season, you can tell that there's going to probably be more. I was hoping it would be self-contained and everything would be explained, but it isn't. But I think it does enough to make it compelling and worth watching, whereas I don't think it's going to blow anybody away, but I did enjoy it, and I do recommend it. Um, I don't think the Wachowski brothers really add anything to it. I just think it's very high budget, very high spectacle, and uh, a lot of babies crowning, dude. Like... I've seen more penises on that show than I've I've seen outside of pornography in, in years because it's it's got a thing about showing this one German dude's cock who at times he's not the best actor but I kind of like him because he's got this cheeky smile that makes it seem like he's you know he's he's actually laughing on the set but they've used it in the take and I love stuff like that because it adds a character to it but they keep showing his his knob all the time and for some reason women giving birth like, full-on close-ups of the baby cannon as the head just busting its way out. It's enough to put you off things for life, but it's one of those things where it's it's one of the most natural things we do. We just don't see it like this, and it happens all the time in the show, so if you're a little bit weak of heart when it comes to that, you might not enjoy that, but I thought it was great, man. Some of the, like, prosthetics and the tech that they use in there, pretty, pretty top tier to have the whole baby busting out of the old birth canal several times. It's... It's something, something else. But this is interesting. I love stuff like this in this game. So these guys are about to rush us at the elevator, but I've got behind them. So I'm just going to slowly make my way past them, and nobody knew I was here. Is that not beautiful? I think that's about as good as it gets, and I love doing that stuff. And this entire sequence coming up is all this. You're going to be sneaking past a bunch of dudes who are waiting for you, and they're never going to know you were there. It's, it's such a simple gaming conceit, but I think it works so well. 
Uh, but that Sense8 has a lot of stuff going for it, because I think there's a lot of flexibility in what it can be. It's just what they choose to make it. At the moment, because they're introducing each of the characters, they want you to, you know, to understand them and to empathise with them, so that when stuff does kick off, you've got a reason to care. So the show is focused on each of their individual turmoil and situations that they're all got themselves into to try and give you an understanding of who they are before they move towards a greater good or a greater threat, I should say. And not all of them are equal in interestingness, but I think they all do provide something to the story once they get where they're getting to, because a lot of it's quite slow. Uh, but there's enough in it to keep you interested, particularly if you're a film fan. Like, there's this Van Damme gag going through the entire uh, African aspect of the film, or Kenyan, sorry, aspect of the, of the series, which is just fantastic, because the character loves Van Damme, he's named his van Van Damme, and it has a spray-painted picture of Van Damme on it, and people call him Van Damme, because this girl takes over his body and kicks some ass, so they all think he is Van Damme, and as a kid, I adored Mr. Jean-Claude, he was a hero of mine, so that is the perfect kind of homage and reference that's going to make me giggle every time, and it did. And then there's another one with the German guys, where they're obsessed with Conan, because they watched it as a kid. So they're always doing what's best in life, Conan. And anybody who's an Arnie fan is going to get that stuff and enjoy it. And even though it's so easy and so simple and doesn't really do much. It's not great writing. It's just if you get the reference and you're a fan of it, it's going to make you smile. But I don't know. It's got like a lot of different religions, a lot of different cultures. It's got pretty much a lot of everything. And you're either going to like that or you're going to hate it as we move here so do not set off the detonated charge at this point don't do it don't detonate it. do it when you're in the vent when you're in the vent nobody can see you when you're out of the vent everybody moves position and it gets crazy so make sure that you're not in the open when you do that or it's going to make this level much more difficult than it needs to be and this is not a tough level guys the path i'm showing you here is is as good as it gets as we sneak through this uh, this cheeky vent But another thing that I get the feeling of when when I'm watching that program, you know because it's a Netflix exclusive series, because it doesn't have to go through like the, the ratings and review boards that a lot of the TV broadcasted shows do, they're able for it to be uh, more adult. And, and I say more adult, which I, I have always, I hate that term. I think it's a stupid term. Like, it's 12 year olds having sex. They're not classed as adults, but they're doing an adult thing. What does that mean then? Are they magicians? Like, come on, what is this term? But... It can be more violent, it can be more graphic, it can contain themes that TV just doesn't touch or has only just recently started to touch, which are things that happen a lot in life but don't happen so much everywhere else because, you know, the, the harsh as fuck. It's the stuff that's been in books for years and is the reason why books get banned. And they're able to do that and there are moments when I, d I don't know if they're doing it because that's part of the story or if they're doing it because they can and I don't know if you get that feeling as well, but there are times when you watch these kind of programs where there'll be some kind of shocking scene that almost seems like it's there because they can. And I don't like that. And it's not because I don't like shocking scenes. It's because I don't want them to diminish the value of said scene. It, you know, it's, it's shocking because it has a point and it has a driving force that adds to something. Whereas suddenly showing a baby crowning, it's like, oh... Although, that does have a point in the story, which I don't want to undermine. It actually does have a, a pretty big point, because it's... Everybody... Well, we see his face, then. That was weird. Everybody remembers their birth, which I don't understand. Well, what? But whatever. I think someone is taking himself a bit too seriously. But that kind of, of, of thing happening, just for the sake of happening, is... Uh, I think Lars von Trier is one of those type of people who uh, just kind of wants to shock for the purpose of shocking even though he seems to think it's artistic where I don't think there's anything really all that artistic about you know penetration even if you do it in black and white like you can put a monochrome filter on pornography it's still pornography and there's still a lot of people that will look at it as trash even though I personally think it's art like but a lot of the times it just doesn't add anything in those circumstances it's just there to try and get a gut response to an audience which you know, when you think about it, is that any different to a horror film that, that does the horror moment where everyone's like, oh my god, it's so, so sick, and everybody holds the face and what have you. Is it any different than that? And people look at that as a trashy horror film, yet yeah. Lars von Trier does it in a foreign language, and everyone's like, oh my god, it's so arty, it's so like art nouveau, it's, it's totally hipster. 
But there is justice in the world, guys, because uh, Yui Balls Kickstarter failed, and he went on YouTube and cursed people, saying, fuck them, you don't want this film, fuck you all. Which is always nice to see somebody get his just desserts. Because that guy has been ruining game series with film for a very long time. He's a terrible director. It's nice to see somebody finally show him that nobody cares. <laughs> but we're coming to the end of the video, guys. I thought I'd add a, a little bit of diversity to the commentary on this one, because it's been a little dry so far. and A lot of people really like that, but... Um, I don't want people to get the impression that that's all that happens in my commentary, because it's not. And uh, hopefully in future I can pay that forward and I'll get less people saying, like, You should talk about this! Like, no... But there was a trophy for something, and now we just have to plant the charge and wait for it to blow out, which... I'm always confused at this. I don't know how deep this facility is, but isn't there a thing called pressure that's pretty bad when you uh, adjust it so suddenly underwater? Like, isn't that... Doesn't it affect the nitrogen in your blood and you get the bends and everything, or you just kind of die? Then again, he might have took those pills that the uh, the Navy has. Then the game goes again locking up before it triggers the cutscene. But Sam's like, yeah, I don't give a shit. It doesn't look that deep, I guess. Maybe they're not that far under. I don't know. Magic. But there's the star in the east. Whatever that's for. There is Black Ops Specialist. Whatever that's for. There is Immune. I think that's for not using a med kit. That one. Uh, the description should have what all these achievements, trophy things do. And then we can get to the end here. So mission complete. All of it completed. One of them cancelled. And then we have one time enemies knocked out, 100% rating, 30 minutes, 25 seconds. And then it's going to show you the overall ranking of each mission when you go overall. And it's going to show you a nice sheet of 100% uh, ratings when I finally click it. There we go. And there it is, folks. I hope it helps. I hope you've enjoyed our little endeavour back into Chaos Theory, the majestic stealth phenomenon that was. Oh, there's another trophy. Greater good, whatever that is. But yeah, the next projects you're going to see on the channel, outside of the ones that are already running, will be uh, Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition, playing as the new characters, and it will be Arkham Knight on uh, Hard Difficulty, or New Game Plus, depending on whichever one's uh, apparently the most difficult. So thank you very much for watching, I hope this helps, and you take care now.